Hey guys, this is Bliss from Compute Hustle. Today we'll be going over a couple features for Kafka. Number one, we'll be seeing how to put our processes into the background so it frees up the foreground of our terminal. Number two, we'll be setting up a multi-broker cluster locally. And number three, I'll be showing you the different fault tolerant features that Kafka has and what makes it so special. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and get started. So to start, let's go ahead and open the Kafka Quick Start page. I already have it open, but it's kafka.apache.org slash quickstart. And open up your favorite terminal. So I'm using iTerm. And you can go ahead and navigate to um, your Kafka directory. So cd slash op slash Kafka. And what we're going to be doing, I'm going to be showing you the little trick to run your Kafka processes in the background. So let's go ahead and start by writing the first part of this command, sudo bin slash zookeeper server start dot sh. And then we're gonna put in the daemon flag. So basically do a dash daemon. So it's like daemon, daemon, but with an A in front of it. And basically this will put the process into the background so we're free to do whatever we want uh, in the terminal. So finish up with config slash zookeeper dot properties. And there you go. Uh, you can check that the process is running by doing ps aux pipe um, grep zookeeper. And basically this is listing all the processes and then going through that list and checking for the name zookeeper. And as you can see, we have this huge file path and we know that our zookeeper server is running. And then we can go ahead, well, before we go ahead and do that, before we run our Kafka server using the same flag, let me go ahead and show you how to enable controlled shutdown. So basically it'll let you do a Kafka server stop.sh without any problems. So navigate into your config directory and open up your server.properties using sudo nano uh, server.properties. And from in here, just navigate to the end of the full um, file and type in the following controlled.shutdown.enable equal to true. So now we can shut down our broker, no problem. Navigate out of the config directory. And then just run the command as normal. bin slash Kafka server start dot sh. Uh, add the daemon flag so it's in the background. Conflict slash server dot properties. And then we can do ps aux again, pipe grep, and then ser search for server dot properties. And as you can see, we have our Kafka server up and running or Kafka broker, sorry. And we can gently shut it down uh, using the same script uh, that we used earlier. Well, technically not, you're just changing the name of the last uh, parameter of it. So instead of Kafka server start, do Kafka server stop, and we don't need the daemon flag this time since this is just gonna run in the background anyways. And so run this command, uh, sudo bin slash Kafka server stop, with the config server properties used. And then we can go ahead and run PS aux again, and we can see that, that the Kafka broker is no longer running. And so basically that's how you um, enable controlled shutdown, as well as how you put um, Kafka brokers into the background and allow your foreground in the terminal to be used. So now that we figured out how to do that, let's go ahead and talk about um, how to create a multi-broker cluster. So the first thing you want to do is, since we're already in our Kafka directory, go into your C, um, CD into your config directory. And what you want to do is copy your server.properties three times and just append um, like one, two, three to them. So copy server.properties into server1.properties. And then just do that with one, two, and three. So we're basically getting the configuration for three different brokers. And then let's go ahead and edit each of these new property files. So sudo, and there's also a little part of the documentation in the quick start that shows you how to do this. Um, well, let me just show you uh, on screen as well. So you sudo into your server one dot properties. Oh, oops, sudo nano. And in here, uh, let's just open it up a bit so you can see. There are three different configurations that you should change. So the first is the ID of the broker. So this is, should be unique to each broker, so we absolutely have to change it. The second is um, 
basically the port that your listener is listening on. Um, or it's a bit confusing to explain at first, but we don't want all our um, brokers to be running on the same port. Otherwise, they'll override each other. So since this will be, we're not going to be running our original server dot properties. We can leave this as um, as it is, but let's just uncomment it anyways, so we don't have the default running. Um, and then I'll speak about advertised listeners maybe in a later video, but it's not relevant since we're running all this locally. If you are running on multiple computers or in an internal network versus an external network, you definitely have to work with advertised uh, listeners. Um, so we've we've dealt with the port and then thirdly you just want to change this logs directory so just add a dash one in there so then um, all your logs aren't going into the same directory for every single broker and then from there uh, you should be ready to go and then just do the same for um, all of the properties the server.properties so in server.1 we left it with um, we left it with the port of 9092 in the second one, we're going to give it broker ID 2, and we're going to give it the listener port of 9093, and uncomment this, and set the logs directory to 2. That should be it for server2.properties, and do the same for server3.properties. Change the broker ID to 3. Um, set the port number to 9094 and set the logs directory to dash 3 and from there we should have three unique um, broker properties so we should be able to run all three of these brokers no problem so go ahead and cd out of config and then just run the same commands that you would normally run to start a Kafka broker but with the different properties so do sudo bin slash kafka server start dot sh add the daemon flag so it's in the background config um, slash server one dot properties I kind of named it a little differently but uh, from the quick start but it's fine um, server two dot properties and then server three dot properties and um, to know that each of these are running, there's a little command. Let me just bring up my notes. Um, you're going to want to run the following command. Um, sorry, uh, dot slash bin slash zookeeper shell dot sh um, localhost 2181. 2181 and uh, 9092 are pretty much like the main ports that zookeeper and um, Kafka use, so just keep that in mind. And then ls slash uh, file path brokers slash IDs. Should look a little something like that. And from in here, you can see that we have the broker IDs for all our current running brokers available. So one, two, three, that's the IDs we gave them. And now we can create our, um, basically uh, creating a multi-cluster uh, a multi-broker cluster involves creating multiple brokers and what that essentially means is if one of these brokers goes down our our topic will still continue running uh, even if we get like for example massive traffic or something of the sort so let's go ahead and create a topic from this and let's just run this command that they have below bin slash kafka topics sh Two dashes create, two dashes bootstrap server, localhost 9092, application factor 3, partitions uh, 1, topic, my replicated topic. And we're basically just creating uh, a topic which has three brokers which will act as backups and one broker which will have the original data. We'll call it my replicated topic. It'll just take a little while to create. And now we can run a command to actually describe the um, basically the the specs, kind of like the specs of our uh, topic. 
So run bin slash Kafka topics sh describe bootstrap server localhost 9092 topic and then enter the topic name my replicated topic. And you can just basically copy and paste this, but I find it's better to type it all out. And as you can see, there's some information in here. The documentation also talks about it. So basically we have the leader, which is the node that has all the primary data and reading and writing all the, to the given partition. Um, so you're always gonna have a leader when you have a cluster. And then we have the replicas, one, two, three. And then we have ISR, which is the in sync replicas. So basically this is everything that's caught up to date with all the data in terms of backups. And it's also a list of everything that's alive. So um, we can go ahead and start writing to um, start writing to this topic, and then I'll show you what happens when you actually uh, shut down one of these brokers or kill one of these brokers. So I ran into a couple issues. So my leader and my replicas and ISR have changed a little, but don't mind that. Let's go ahead and create our producer and consumer. So go ahead, create. Um, I'm on iTerm, so I'm just creating two new tabs, but you want to have a place for the producer and consumer to be open. So go ahead and navigate to your Kafka directory for both. And I'm just going to run this command bin slash Kafka, or let me put a pseudo in front of it. Also, producer broker list localhost 9092 topic my replicated topic. And I'm waiting for a greater than sign. That should signal that it's there. And I'm just going to create my consumer. So bin slash um, Kafka console consumer bootstrap server localhost 9092 from beginning. And at this point, you can start copy and pasting. Uh, let me see. Oh, I forgot the topic. And as you can see, um, I, I was having some trouble earlier with this topic. But um, as, it, as you can see here, just ignore the above. So we can send a couple messages uh, in our producer. Um, Hi, this is bliss. As you can see, it's working perfectly fine. Um, but let's see what happens when, for example, let's kill our second broker. So ps ox grep server 2properties And to kill this broker, you can just go ahead and get this, um, this is basically a second column first value to get the process ID. And then do a sudo um, kill dash nine, which is like just killing it no matter what. And then copy and paste the process ID. And then um, when we describe the topic again, we should see that the ISR has changed. So as you can see, um, we had our replicas with two in it originally, but now it's showing that our second broker is not in sync. But despite this, our producer and consumer should still work. So producer looks fine. Um, we can go ahead and type something. Um, hello, this is after our, our second broker has been killed. And as you can see, we're, we're actually still fine even though we've lost one of our brokers. And this is what it means to be fault tolerant, essentially. Um, and that's why we have a cluster in the first place. So basically, if we were just using, I don't know, sockets, and we overloaded our computer and for some reason it went down on massive traffic, then of course um, it's not going to be scalable at all. But since we have a number of brokers and in um, an ideal scenario, we would distribute um, our brokers across multiple computers, then um, you basically have the ability to scale as much as you need, adding in as much um, 
adding as many backup computers or partitions as you need to basically handle whatever um, like load of traffic you might have for this application. And that essentially is um, fault tolerance in a nutshell. So today we learned a little about um, how to put processes into the background, about multi-broker clusters, and about fault tolerance. Um, this video went on for a little longer than I would have liked, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any feedback or any questions, feel free to comment below, and I'll see you guys next time.